Okay. So basically, um, I thought I'd give you an update into the uh, development of my new FPV ground station. Um, uh, a few guys shown a bit of an interest in my original, um, my original version one, which was designed specifically for sort of aerial photography. Um, I'm sort of working on one now, which is a little bit more simplified, a um, little bit more modular, not quite as built in, not quite as fancy, but still, you know, I'm hoping it's going to be pretty cool. Um, so that's the version one, um, and I just thought I'd give you an update on to how I'm getting on with version two. Um, so at the moment I'm sort of working on the panel layouts and stuff, um, which are going to be CNC machined um, from basically Perspex, which is like matte coated see-through Perspex, and on the back it has uh, like a black um, sort of layer, which is sort of machined out. So where you see, um, this is the viewable area inside here. Um, again, we're going for the um, leatherette, black leather sort of covered, uh, system and then you've got these sort of perspex panels and so these are going to be etched out with a CNC machine to make them transparent so we're going to be having sort of backlit LED VU meter um, these are the volume up volume down uh, and this is a power switch um, and then essentially the right hand panel there's stereo speakers in between these two chaps um, so we've got three outputs audio and video um, which I've got a, um, a video splitter, um, which I'll be using. This is a be essentially a 12 volt output jack uh, for running, um, you know, like video goggles and stuff, um, and any video and audio inputs down the bottom. I'm not completely 100% on the layout yet. Uh, this side's looking pretty like it's going to, you know, good to go. Um, this side I'm still playing with, but essentially I wanted to have three. Obviously, we've got one of them used for the main TV built into the case. Um, but then we don't, you know, your goggles out, your, um, you know, video recorder, um, handy cam out, so I can record my flights, uh, and then some sort of auxiliary maybe for another screen or something, uh, more for the reasons I can't think of. Um, and so the panels, uh, once I get my main switch, um, main power switch, which I'm kind of thinking of going down uh, the whole performance PCs job. I mean, I. For my computer, I bought one of these vandal resistant switches, which are pretty nice. Um, they're only sort of 15 bucks, um, but they kind of look like that, you know, and they're illuminated ring, um, stainless steel, which are pretty smart looking. Um, so, essentially, I'm going to be having one of them um, here uh, with a secondary ring around the outside, which will illuminate. Um, and again, so this is etched out by the CNC machine and there'll be an array of LEDs behind it to sort of backlight it um, and it'll also be sort of backlit around the um, Phono RCA plugs um, so if I'm doing some night flying obviously I'll be able to see where I'm plugging stuff into so um, what I do is I'll show you uh, where I am at the moment with the electronics which is uh, basically what I've been working on um, <coughs> well a bit of time now, uh, just trying to figure it out. Um, so what I'll do, and let's switch to the um, the code for the microcontroller. So basically, um, what we've been doing, um, if I show you the main sort of breadboard, uh, not of, this is in prototype format, of course, at the moment. Um, I'll just give it some power. Okie dokie. So, just to give you a sort of brief overview, I mean, you've got the, this here is, you know, going to be linked into the main vandal resistance sort of power switch. Uh, this is your, your 20 segment, uh, it's actually two 10 segment bar graph displays, which are red LEDs, being driven by a couple of 3914 uh, chips, um, LED bar graph drivers. Um, now, the way I'm doing this is I'm actually using a, a digital pop chip. Um, which means the benefit of this means I'm only essentially using sort of three input output lines to the main microcontroller, um, which only has 16 in total. And I've already sort of, I wouldn't say run out, but I'm using them all. Um, so to keep things as efficient as possible, I'm using a digital pot. So what I do is I've I'm sort of built a program that will just control a digipot um, on a scale of one to a hundred. Um, 
and that scale would dictate a position on the bar. Um, so it means I have sort of greater, greater control over it. Um, so yeah, that's the main thing. Uh, let me show you uh, on the code here. Um, so we've obviously got first part of the market controller code. We're talking about um, the input and outputs, assigning those, um, setting up the variables and stuff, um, usual routine. Um, and you can see, I mean, it's just a reasonable um, bit of code about to write for this, funnily enough. But, uh, you know, it's all good fun. Um, so right here we've got a battery checking code, yeah, um, uh, where we just basically um, convert an RC time function into um, an actual voltage, which is uh, like 1220 here is a variable I've set up so I can control the voltage um, within the program just to sort of save me having to use a variable uh, voltage supply to test various voltages. Um, but to give you an example, if we, if we flick back to the prototype here, if we... Uh, when we want to boot it up, we just press the and hold. Okie dokie. So this shows me the voltage of the um, of the battery. Um, and again, in the programming there, you saw a 12.2 uh, volt, so near the top. Now what I've done here is the top range is essentially about 12.6, uh, 12.4, it still stays at the top. Um, ranging down, um, the lowest voltage is basically 10 volt. Um, I don't tend to like going below um, 11 volt personally for a 3S LiPo cell. And funnily enough, I've just actually spanked a, um, a 4,000 milliamp hour LiPo pack because I didn't have a, a battery alarm on it, left it switched on, and the rest is history. So um, I obviously, on this new case, I want to make sure, uh, the original case is uh, lead acid battery, very heavy. Um, so I've got a 5,000 milliamp hour um, battery this time. Um, and obviously I want to make sure it's kept in good condition. Um, so to illustrate the, um, I suppose first of all the battery function, uh, flip back to the code, if I make this for example, um, let's say 11 volt, um, just download that to the, uh, the microcontroller. Okay. Um, we'll boot her up. Now the thing about this switch is I only wanted to make it so it's quite reliable and I, you know, well, more importantly I don't want to be turning it on by accident or turning it off by accident. So if I just sort of press the switch, it won't fully boot up, yeah? So it relies on me sort of forcibly holding it down until it boots up. Okay, so we're down to about 11 volt now and you'll see the sort of bar graph display showing about a midway point. Um, And it gives me a little warning uh, routine, basically, so I know the batteries are starting to get a bit low. Um, it's about maybe, maybe 10, 15 seconds or so. Um, and then this LED here is basically the, you know, like the ring around the, the power switch, um, which just flashes to draw me attention to the fact the batteries are getting a bit low. So what I do is I flick back there. Let's say we go below sort of. Um, 11 volt we go to about sort of 1060 um, so bear in mind that's about 10.6 volt yeah we'll just download that to the uh, to the microcontroller um, this just simulates a lower voltage again we boot her up and she's in so obviously the power to the TV gets turned on at this point um, and you can see you've got your tone there for the battery getting low does it a little bit more frequently as well. Um, starting to get a little bit more anxious. Um, and then finally, you know, essentially once we start going below the sort of 10, 10.4, 10 volt mark, um, you know, we're getting a bit, a bit danger zone. Um, so we'll give it 10.2 volt just for a laugh. Download that, <coughs> slightly different routine, uh, but again, it needs to sort of be able to draw my attention a bit more. And you can see it's a little bit further down on the display now. A little bit more of an annoying, annoying tone. And you'll see here as well, we've got the, um, the main power ring light is flashing a little bit more consistently. Um, Okie dokie, so that shows the, um, 
factory warning system. Let's bung it back up to about 12 volt just for a laugh because that's going to get annoying, which is the whole point, of course. Okie dokie. So, um, so again, you just boot it up, power to the TV comes on, um, power to the, uh, this is the video splitter, um, power to the video splitter comes on as well. Um, and then obviously if you want to shut it down, it's the same process, hold the button in, and it's off. So, the other thing I've been working on as well is the, because um, I've got an audio um, amplifier built into the case, um, which I'll show you in a different video uh, when I get around to getting some of the rest of the bits of the case done. I don't want to show it as it is at the moment, so it looks, doesn't look sexy enough. Um, but yeah, I've got an audio amplifier chip running and uh, rather than using like a normal, you know, sort of potentiometer dial, um, which is a bit annoying, you know, because it gets knocked, it gets moved, um, I thought I'd work on trying to sort of figure out a subroutine to do uh, digital volume control. So that's what these chaps are here, um, where you, um, you can see you've got an arrow tone. Um, so to turn the audio on, uh, you hold both the volume buttons down. You'll see here you've got your blue light that sort of symbolises the power. Um, and I think what, I, what I'll also do at this point um, is um, if I turn the lights off, because I've also got, you see here, it's like a, a light sensor, yeah? Because the panels are going to be backlit. So what I do is I turn the light off um, and we'll see how that works. And as you can see, the, um, that blue LED <coughs> basically symbolises what the um, backlights will come on um, in the event of sort of low light. So if the sun starts setting or I'm feeling if I'm feeling brave, I'm going to do a night flight, for example, on FPV, and obviously I can I can see what's going on in the on the case and where I'm plugging stuff in. Um, so yeah, with the volume here, we've got um, up and down. And the cool thing about this is what I've done is it sets it into the RAM. So let's say that's where I want the volume. Um, you know, obviously, next time I boot the, boot the system up, it's going to remember where, where my volume is. Um, so I'll turn the audio off, and when I turn the audio back on, um, obviously, it'll remember my audio setting, yeah, where I like to have the volume. Um, and it's nice because it means I'm sort of keeping, uh, sort of limiting the number of um, sort of moving parts if you like to run out, um, keep it as reliable as possible. And it works really, really well. I'm quite happy with that. Um, and the cool thing is obviously switching the display from you know showing you your voltage level uh, to the volume level uh, and obviously it'll switch back again uh, back to the voltage level. So yeah I'm pretty happy with that at the moment, um, it's working really well. Um, obviously the next challenge is to get it um, you know soldered up basically into um, some sort of strip board format which I've started on that already. Uh, what I do is I just flip the lights back on um, so we can have a better look. Um, yeah, so I've got a, uh, this is what I've basically started on today, um, we use it for the two 3914 bar graph display drivers, um, I soldered that up today which is nice, um, and obviously this header pin will go into the top board which will hold the, um, the LED uh, bar graphs. That's reasonably, reasonably neat and tidy. Um, and obviously, once I've sort of got these things onto strip board, then I can start clearing off some of my breadboard and uh, playing around with some other ideas. Um, I mean, you've got things like this. Um, this chip here, by the way, is a um, a seven four eight C O four, which is all it is is like inverter, uh, a buffered inverter. Yeah. So you'll notice here the volume button as this LED turns on. This one turns off. It's as similar as that, that's all it does, yeah. Um, but the idea is obviously where I've got me um, um, sort of back to the, the view here where we've got your volume controls up and down. Um, this ring will be lit up, uh, let's say green, it'll probably be white because the audio sockets are white for 
the audio and then when you press it it will go red or something like that you know uh, I've not quite figured that out yet, uh, the colours and things, but obviously once I've got these panels cut I can sort of shine some lights behind it and see what looks the coolest. Um, I'm going to have some text in here like bold up and bold down or something like that maybe. Um, so I think it should look pretty cool. Um, and um, yeah, in terms of the actual uh, code structure, I mean, the problem is, I mean, like, I've had to strip out quite a lot of stuff actually because you can see the memory map here, look. Yeah, so basically this is the area I've got free for code, yeah? Uh, this is what I filled up already. So I've already had to strip out a couple of subroutines. Um, I was getting a little bit too fancy for my own good, to be honest. Um, like here's the alarm danger routine, for example, that it goes through. Uh, and essentially what I've done here, like I said before, I've sort of uh, I've used the Digipop um, digital potentiometer basically where um, um, by sort of creating a subroutine for that, I can just, um, you know, select any bar on the display I want by just setting a, a V position uh, from 0 to 100 increments of 5, obviously, because there's 20 LEDs. Um, got here's the check the light routine, just checks out the photo resistor, sees if it's between 58 and uh, less than 40, and it'll switch the lights on or not. Uh, <clears throat> and here's your volume set routine. Once you've done your volume up and volume down, of course, um, it will sort of sit there and see if you're going to make any more changes for a bit. Uh, if not, it will go and uh, store into the EEPROM, yeah, uh, the volume setting. Um, you know, the mute function, unmute, which is basically just turning the audio power on and off. Um, and here's the routine, just basically checks the volume buttons themselves. Um, this is the power button. Decide where we're where we're going to go. Uh, this is your power down routine. Uh, see there, which is like you know the bit where it goes. This is basically set up a scan loop uh, to a hundred to one, and then um, we just reduce it every time we come down. We do a little sort of mathematical function here to exponentially reduce the uh, frequency of the speaker by x. Um, to give you the sort of sound, you know, pretty straightforward stuff really. Um, the power up routine, similar thing but in reverse, depending on which way you look at it. Um, this is mode one, which is basically on. Uh, this is the standby mode. Um, there's a few little bits and pieces to sort of work out. I mean, I'm thinking maybe I should uh, be able to see the voltage as soon as I open the case up, um, and the entire power is triggered by, um, you know, uh, being able to just open the lid and there's a little micro switch inside um, which gets triggered um, and starts up the power for the microcontroller and stuff um, and then obviously the microcontroller controls the power for the, the TV and things um, which is nicer because you've got more control like for example if the um, if the battery falls below a particular point and it goes into alarm battery danger mode um, it will basically turn off all the backlights yeah if um, if you've got the night lights on, just to save a bit more power uh, and turn off the audio as well, uh, so that we're only uh, doing your main stuff. So that's about as far as I've got so far. Um, and I can't get the panels cut until um, I get my vandal resistance switch in there to see sort of exactly what size it needs to be cut out. Um, and I just need to finish off for sort of figuring out exactly the layout of this and what text I'm going to have on it, if any. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, um, I've got a few little things to touch up, but basically I'm sort of happy how it's going to look and work and, you know, sound and stuff, so, cool. So, keep in touch, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys soon. Cheers.